Hi there, greetings. I'm very glad that you've joined me today for these readings, which are for day number 84 in the Digging Deeper Daily Reading Calendar. They are Numbers 26, Psalm 41, and the second reading in Acts 2. May the Lord bless you real good today. Yesterday we heard Balaam's final prophecies. Even though he was a shaman and a charlatan, God chose to speak through him on that occasion, giving a small glimpse of God's redemptive plan. Numbers 26 After the plague had ended, the Lord said to Moses and Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, From the whole community of Israel, record the names of all the warriors by their families. List all the men twenty years old or older who are able to go to war. So there on the plains of Moab beside the Jordan River, across from Jericho, Moses and Eleazar the priest issued these instructions to the leaders of Israel. List all the men of Israel twenty years old and older, just as the Lord commanded Moses. This is the record of the descendants of Israel who came out of Egypt. These were the clans descended from the sons of Reuben, Jacob's oldest son, the Hanokite clan, named after their ancestor Hanok, the Paluite clan, named after their ancestor Palu, the Hezronite clan, named after their ancestor Hezron, the Carmite clan, named after their ancestor Carmi. These were the clans of Reuben. Their registered troops numbered 43,730. Palu was the ancestor of Eliab, and Eliab was the father of Nemuel, Dathan, and Abiram. This Dathan and Abiram are the same community leaders who conspired with Korah against Moses and Aaron, rebelling against the Lord. But the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed them with Korah, and fire devoured 250 of their followers. This served as a warning to the entire nation of Israel. However, the sons of Korah did not die that day. These were the clans descended from the sons of Simeon, the Jemulite clan named after their ancestor Jemuel, the Jaminite clan named after their ancestor Jamin, the Jakinite clan named after their ancestor Jakin, the Zoharite clan named after their ancestor Zohar, the Shaluite clan named after their ancestor Shaul. These were the clans of Simeon. Their registered troops numbered 22,200. These were the clans that descended from the sons of Gad, the Zephonite clan, named after their ancestor Zephon, the Haggite clan, named after their ancestor Haggi, the Shunite clan, named after their ancestor Shuni, the Oznite clan, named after their ancestor Ozni, the Erite clan, named after their ancestor Eri, the Arodite clan, named after their ancestor Arodi, the Arelite clan, named after their ancestor Areli. These were the clans of Gad. Their registered troops numbered 40,500. Judah had two sons, Er and Onan, who had died in the land of Canaan. These were the clans descended from Judah's surviving sons the Shelanite clan, named after their ancestor Shelah, the Perizzite clan, named after their ancestor Perez, the Zerahite clan, named after their ancestor Zera. These were the subclans descended from the Perizzites, the Hezronites, named after their ancestor Hezron, the Hamulites, named after their ancestor Hamul. These were the clans of Judah. Their registered troops numbered 76,500. These were the clans descended from the sons of Issachar, the Toite clan, named after their ancestor Tola, the Puite clan, named after their ancestor Pua, the Jashubite clan, named after their ancestor Jashub, the Shimronite clan, named after their ancestor Shimron. These were the clans of Issachar. Their registered troops numbered 64,300. These were the clans descended from the sons of Zebulun, the Seredite clan, named after their ancestor Sered, the Elonite clan, named after their ancestor Elon, 
the Jahle Elite clan, named after their ancestor Jahle El. These were the clans of Zebulun. Their registered troops numbered 60,500. Two clans were descended from Joseph through Manasseh and Ephraim. These were the clans descended from Manasseh, the Machirite clan named after their ancestor Machir, the Gileadite clan named after their ancestor Gilead, Machir's son. These were the sub-clans descended from the Gileadites, the Iezerites named after their ancestor Iezer, the Helekites named after their ancestor Helek, the Asrielites named after their ancestor Asriel, the Shechemites named after their ancestor Shechem, the Shemidites named after their ancestor Shemida, the Heferites named after their ancestor Hefer, one of Hefer's descendants, Zelophad, had no sons, but his daughter's names were Mahla, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirza. These were the clans of Manasseh. Their registered troops numbered 52,700. These were the clans descended from the sons of Ephraim. The Shuthelahite clan, named after their ancestor Shuthela, the Bekerite clan, named after their ancestor Beker, the Tahanite clan, named after their ancestor Tahan. This was the sub-clan descended from the Shuthelahites. The Eranites, named after their ancestor Eran. These were the clans of Ephraim. Their registered troops numbered 32,500. These clans of Manasseh and Ephraim were all descendants of Joseph. These were the clans descended from the sons of Benjamin, the Belite clan named after their ancestor Bela, the Ashbelite clan named after their ancestor Ashbel, the Ahiramite clan named after their ancestor Ahiram, the Shufamite clan named after their ancestor Shufam, the Hufamite clan named after their ancestor Hufam. These were the subclans descended from the Belites the Ardites, named after their ancestor Ard, the Naamites, named after their ancestor Naaman. These were the clans of Benjamin. Their registered troops numbered 45,600. These were the clans descended from the sons of Dan, the Shuhamite clan, named after their ancestor Shuham. These were the Shuhamite clans of Dan. Their registered troops numbered 64,400. These were the clans descended from the sons of Asher, the Imnite clan named after their ancestor Imna, the Ishbite clan named after their ancestor Ishbi, the Beriite clan named after their ancestor Beria. These were the subclans descended from the Beriites, the Heberites named after their ancestor Heber, the Malkiites named after their ancestor Malkiel. Asher also had a daughter named Sarah. These were the clans of Asher. Their registered troops numbered 53,400. These were the clans descended from the sons of Naphtali, the Jazeelite clans named after their ancestor Jazael, the Gunite clan named after their ancestor Guni, the Jezerite clan named after their ancestor Jezer, the Shilemite clan named after their ancestor Shilem. These were the clans of Naphtali. Their registered troops numbered 45,400. In summary, whew, the registered troops of Israel numbered 601,730. Then the Lord said to Moses, Divide the land among the tribes and distribute the grants of land in proportion to the tribes' populations, as indicated by the number of names on the list. Give the larger tribes more land and the smaller tribes less land, each group receiving a grant in proportion to the size of its population. But you must assign the land by lot and give land to each ancestral tribe according to the number of names on the list. Each grant of land must be assigned by lot among the larger and smaller tribal groups. This is the record of the Levites who were counted according to their clans the Gershonite clan named after their ancestor Gershon, the Kohathite clan named after their ancestor Kohath, the Merarite clan named after their ancestor Merari, 
The Libnites, the Hebronites, the Machlites, the Mushites, and the Korahites were all subclans of the Levites. Now Kohath was the ancestor of Amram, and Amram's wife was named Jochebed. She also was a descendant of Levi, born among the Levites in the land of Egypt. Amram and Jochebed became the parents of Aaron and Moses and their sister Miriam. To Aaron were born Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died when they burned before the Lord the wrong kind of fire, different than he had commanded. The men of the Levite clans who were one month old or older numbered twenty-three thousand. But the Levites were not included in the registration of the rest of the people of Israel because they were not given an allotment of land when it was divided among the Israelites. So these are the results of the registration of the people of Israel as conducted by Moses and Eleazar the priest on the plains of Moab beside the Jordan River across from Jericho. Not one person on this list had been among those listed in the previous registration taken by Moses and Aaron in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, They will all die in the wilderness. Not one of them survived except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. Hi, I'm Jim Olson, and I work uh, with Phil Fields with the uh, Terjemahan, Sederhana, Indonesia, and I'm going to read Psalm 41 for you. Psalm 41, for the choir director, a psalm of David. Oh, the joys of those who are kind to the poor. The Lord rescues them when they are in trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. He gives them prosperity in the land and rescues them from their enemies. The Lord nurses them when they are sick and restores them to health. O Lord, I prayed, have mercy on me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. But my enemies say nothing but evil about me. How soon will he die and be forgotten, they ask. They visit me as if they were my friends, but all the while they gather gossip, and when they leave, they spread it everywhere. All who hate me whisper about me, imagining the worst. He has some fatal disease, they say. He will never get out of that bed. Even my best friend, the one I trusted completely, the one who shared my food, has turned against me. Lord, have mercy on me. Make me well again so I can pay them back. I know you are pleased with me, for you have not let my enemies triumph over me. You have preserved my life because I am innocent. You have brought me into your presence forever. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Yesterday we heard how the Holy Spirit came with tongues of fire and a loud noise and the beginning part of Peter's first famous sermon. Today's reading of the second half of Acts 2 is by Joel Tigreen, and we start at verse 22. People of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. But God knew what would happen, and this prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to the cross and killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. King David said this about him, I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope, for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life, and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Dear brothers, think about this. 
you can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself, for he died and was buried, and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet, and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand, and the Father, as he has promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. For David himself never ascended into heaven, yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be the Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Thank you for joining us for the readings today. And now let's pray together. Heavenly Father, how we desire that you would shake this place and that you would send on each of us in our various places the Holy Spirit with fire, with languages, with power. Help us to have a deep sense of awe at what you do. And Father, we pray that we would be able to meet with others to share with them, to share the joys of deep fellowship, the joys of being with your people. Father, today we pray that you would be with us, that your Holy Spirit would be with us just as you were with the first Christians. And we pray this for the glory of Christ Jesus. Amen.